Here are five life-changing lessons I've learned in 2022, which can improve your life as a content creator. Ready? Let's do this. Hi, my lovely people. It's Natalia and welcome back to my channel where I help you create better content and grow on social media. Last year was pretty intense. It definitely wasn't the greatest one for me, but I'm stepping into 2023 being a lot more intentional. And this of course starts with a good old reflection. Here are some of the crucial lessons I had to learn sometimes the hard way in 2022. And I'm sharing them with you in hopes that they can save you from making the same mistakes and improve your life as a content creator and a business owner. Let's jump to less Lesson number one, your personal life affects your business. Now we're going to start a little bit heavy, but hear me out. This is the most powerful and definitely the hardest lesson I had to learn in 2022. Your unresolved pain has a massive impact on your business. We all have a range of issues. For some, these are small and don't affect their daily lives. And for others, they're bigger and much more consequential. If you're like me and belong to the second group, those issues are going to seep into your performance professional life. Last year, I started noticing how some of my negative behavior patterns influenced the way I operated within my business, starting with a classic pattern of people pleasing, which led me to then not use my voice when it really mattered. Instead of relying on my experience and trusting myself, I would play along with situations I wasn't agreeing with. I would not say no. I'd completely change how I do things for a difficult client or not communicate clearly for fear of not making them happy. Even saying this out loud now feels super uncomfortable, but I know it needs to be said because those patterns affect so many of us and we have to talk more about it openly. Another one of those was my tendency to avoid confrontations, which of course is very closely related to people pleasing. For instance, because I tried to avoid conflict, I didn't voice dissatisfaction with a service I booked that provided me with incorrect information. As a result, I made decisions within my business that were not the greatest, wasting a lot of my time, my resources, and effort along the way. In hindsight, I understand that speaking up and holding them accountable for the advice given would have been a much better way to approach the situation, but I decided to stay silent. And of course, I cannot miss my favorite monster that reared its ugly head a few times last year, self-sabotage. I've missed a few really amazing opportunities because I got overly self-critical, allowed my imposter syndrome to get the better of me, or convinced myself I wasn't ready for them only to see those opportunities go to other people and then realize I would have done an incredible job each time. All of these behaviors come from unresolved pain, from unhealed wounds, and holding very limiting beliefs about you and the world. If you don't address them and address them soon, they affect your ability to make money and work with clients, which then has a very negative impact on your business. I want to also make space for two honorable mentions here. First is your workspace and how you organize it because it really influences how efficient or how distracted you are. This is something I've detected right at the very beginning of the year and progressively work towards improving it. And I can definitely say now, Wow, the difference is huge. I have a little business corner now and every time I step into it, my mind instantly goes into work mode, which is amazing. The second one is your work-life balance. I've noticed that if I don't hold this balance in place, my creativity tanks dramatically. When you're overworked, you're then uninspired and disconnected and it's so much harder to produce valuable content on a consistent basis. Organizing my workspace really helped me achieve more of a balance here because my home now has sections that don't really intermingle. When I'm done working, I leave my business corner and all the business stuff gets left behind there. I no longer think, no longer focus on, or I'm tempted to get back there because my workday is done. Now let's move on to lesson number two, because here lies one of the keys to actually breaking the cycle of ne negative behavior patterns and addressing some of the issues. So lesson number two, boundaries are key. If there's one thing that I've been really consistent in throughout my life is letting my boundaries be crossed over and over again. I'm not going to get into personal stuff in here because there's a lot to unpack and we sit here for hours, but I want to focus specifically on boundaries in business and on social media. We all want the best for our clients and for the people we work with, but there needs to be a balance between providing an excellent service and taking care of yourself. Setting clear boundaries with clients is actually a way of building a good professional rapport. And a great example that comes to mind here is being super clear about the services you offer, the scope of the projects, and your area of expertise. Unless these things are clearly communicated, you're opening yourself up for potential setbacks and misunderstandings in your work with clients and risk damaging the relationship. 
Same goes for the payment terms and important policies for cancellations and no-shows or lateness. All these things should be in place to protect both your client and yourself. And I didn't really think about some of these issues before I started because frankly, I didn't have time to think about them. So I'm actively working on setting clear boundaries in my business in 2023. Okay, but what about being a content creator? That comes with another set of very specific issues that can arise, making your life super hard. And I think these are the kinds of boundaries I really needed to set up last year. There were people being super nasty to me, loads of entitled people demanding that I help them or work for free, and some blatant invasions of my privacy. I'm generally much better at handling these issues in my second year as a content creator, but I've noticed something funny happening in me personally. With the sheer amount of messages I receive across different and platforms, I can't really reply to everyone. What started happening over time was that I didn't want to post my Instagram stories at all because it seemed rude to show up in this way when there are tons of unanswered messages in my inbox. I needed to really sit with myself and analyze what the problem actually was. I felt bad about not being able to reply to everyone, so I let it negatively affect my online presence. The issue here is that I didn't have clear boundaries around the time I spent online. Now, I understand that posting valuable content and showing up with stories is my way of serving the majority of my community. If I can get back to everyone privately, I shouldn't sacrifice the value I can bring by sharing content that can be accessed by everyone. I'm also very intentional about how I spend my time on social media platforms, limiting it to a short period daily to engage, to reply to as many people as I can, and move on to work on things that can really better my whole community. What I also learned last year is that setting boundaries is actually active on our part. It's about you taking an action and communicating something clearly to the other person. It's not enough to keep repeating things over and over again or bringing up your issues in the most diplomatic way possible. Sure, we don't want to burn bridges because in the long run, it's usually not worth it, but taking a strong stance is so important in many tricky situations. Ultimately, you need to know what you will allow and you won't allow in your life or business. Lesson number three, trust your gut. I know it's such a cliche, but I still absolutely have to include on my list because it's one of the most tangible lessons I've learned in 2022. Every time I ignored my instinct, I ended up in a bad situation. Whether it's a client that didn't feel right, a weird comment someone uttered and I ignored, or an opportunity that ended up being exploitative in nature, going against my gut feeling enough times affected my business and my life too. Trusting your gut is essential both if you're a content creator and a business owner. With an online presence, it's important to understand what resonates with your audience and what content will be most valuable to them. Learning to trust your intuition and instincts when it comes to content creation can be such a powerful tool. As an example, if you have a hunch that a certain topic will be popular, then it's likely worth exploring. It's definitely something I've experienced previously at the start of my YouTube journey when I felt like Canva tutorials from the perspective of social media content creation are something that my audience will be interested in. After doing enough research and identifying content gaps in this space, I've produced videos that became popular. Had I gone against that initial hunch and pursued something different, I may not be where I am today in my content journey, having helped tons of people with my YouTube videos alone. Now, in hindsight, the part that I struggle with more is trusting my gut in business. It's so crucial to sit with yourself when you feel like doubts arise around a specific business decision you have to make. Is it something coming from lack of self-worth or imposter syndrome, as I've mentioned before, or is it your intuition guiding you because something really doesn't feel right about this particular opportunity? What I discovered last year is usually there are two types of feelings that come up in situations like this, a fear mingled with excitement or a fear slash an uneasy feeling down at the pit of your stomach. In my opinion, the first type of fear is the one that you should always go after because even though you might be slightly nervous about say, taking on a challenge, you also feel excitement and enthusiasm which drive you forward. The second feeling though is the one to watch out for because it usually indicates that something doesn't sit right with you. Whether it's going against your values, not having enough experience in a particular area or not trusting the person offering you something, this hunch will most likely be there and you need to listen to it. There were many times last year when I completely ignored this uneasy feeling and ended up in a spot that I did not want to be in. As a business owner, it's important to trust your gut when it comes to making decisions about what clients to work with, partners to collaborate with, projects to take on, and opportunities to pursue. Your inner voice is here to guide you, so don't ever ignore it. Lesson number four, healing never ends. I used to think my healing journey would reach a destination at some point, but in 2022, I've come to learn that in fact, 
that journey never ends. Even though my mental health has gotten significantly better in the last months, there are still many areas I need to address and many times when things are not that great. Before, this realization would make me feel bad and was a clear indication to me that I'm not there yet. Now, I know that despite the work that still has to be done, I've made a lot of progress and I deserve to give myself some compassion and grace. I know a lot of you have the same tendency to be super hard on yourself because you talk to me about this in the comments, DMs, or emails. The thing is, there's a big difference between demanding a lot from yourself and judging yourself too harshly. Ironically, letting go of the idea of being healed was one of the most important factors in my progress towards actually getting better. In this spirit, I happily ticked off my goal to finally manage depression and heal my mental health and marked it as achieved in December 2022. All we can do is embrace the process and strive for awareness, for more peace and more mindful living. Being present is the biggest gift you can give yourself and expecting perfection in any area of your life is already asking too much. Lesson number five, find your non-negotiables. The consequences of not taking care of yourself far outweigh any results that come from the hustle mentality. Sure, you may get places quicker, but you're losing something in the long run. Imagine this, you're going to the gym and doing one super intense workout to failure, which takes you out for a week because the doms are out of this world. That's one workout that week. Now, let's say you go to the gym and work out at 70, 80% of your capacity. You can easily get in four, five, six workouts in this week because you've not gone all in. That's still intense, but you don't burn out at the start. There's room for progress and there's still plenty of room for recovery. That's how I view consistently overworking. Sure, the growth might be incredible if you say post twice a day, every day on Instagram for months, but is it worth it with the possibility of burnout where you won't even want to work at all or for the other areas it may be affecting? I'd rather grow slowly than sacrifice my authenticity along the way. As I've just mentioned in lesson number four, being present in my daily life is an important value I hold. Maintaining a robust online presence like this without a team to support it would be incredibly draining and actually detrimental to my goals in life. Apart from running a business and being a passionate content creator, I want to be a caring partner, a great daughter, a supportive sister, a good friend. I want to improve my skills, find time for other passions, and explore the world. Sure, there's a time and place for going super hard in one direction, but continually neglecting other aspects of your life for the sake of work is not it. Last year, I've learned to find my absolute non-negotiables. If I want to live a structured and conscious life, then sleep, meditation, and exercise need to be a fixture in my daily routine. All those practices help me stay focused, keep my mental health in check, and help me gain clarity on my goals. Although I've been super consistent with my workouts, hitting the gym four days a week for most of last year, I've seriously neglected my meditation practice. In a way, it was kind of easy to do. Staying up late to work meant I wanted to go to bed as soon as possible to get as much sleep as possible, so obviously no meditation in the evening. Then I'd wake up groggy since I couldn't get my eight hours in, so meditating in the morning wasn't that appealing either, and so it went on. First it was a couple of days, then weeks, then it turned into months of patchy practice at best, and no practice at worst. The reason I say this is not to convince you to do any of those things. It's not about specific activities, it's about what's important to you. I now know I absolutely have to make space in my calendar for my non-negotiables first. I need to see and talk to my friends and family a lot, I must have a morning and evening routine in place, and I need to take care of myself too. No matter how ambitious I may be, it's not worth sacrificing what truly makes me who I am for it. What has been the biggest lesson you have learned in 2022. Share it down in the comments below and let's exchange some of our experiences to get better together as a community. Now that we've learned our lessons and hopefully reflected on them thoroughly, it's time to be intentional and take imperfect action in 2023. This is why you need a solid marketing strategy and I'm confident this video right here is going to help you build it. I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.